All right, Lawrence, hope you feel better. I'm just waiting for Joe to show up so I can do this review. Joe who? You know I'm your co-host on this show, right? You're not on this show. Of course I'm on this show. Don't you remember last week? Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Just Four Movies, where we take movies fresh out of the Hollywood womb and dissect them for you. As always, I'm Manny Classic. With me this week is the man of constant hatred, Paul Workman. Paul, what do we see this week? This week, we saw the Cloverfield Paradox. Did we do flashback humor last week? Don't worry, dude. It's a cold open. Nobody watches this thing anyway. Besides, the movie's about to start. It's a lie! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Workman. I am the man of constant hatred. Welcome back to Just Born Movies, the show where we take movies straight out of the Hollywood womb and dissect them for you. My guest this week is Manny Classic. Manny Classic, what did we see? Uh, this week we saw Marvel's Black Panther. Mm -hmm. I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh-huh. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this. How much more are you hiding? Hola. How'd you like this film? Um, legitimately, it's uh, now in my top five of Marvel films. Um, honestly... If I'm ranking them, it's probably my number two. So, that's how much I liked it. A yeah. whole lot. Honestly, I think it might be my number two as well. Uh, Captain America Winter Soldier is still my number one, but this film is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, we didn't confer on our list, but my number one is also Captain America Winter Soldier. It's, it's really great. But that, That's a great film. Yeah. But, here we go. <laughs> so, what did you like about the film? Uh, you know, the, the easiest thing for me to do right now would be to say everything, but I feel like that's not a compelling video. Just to look at the camera and be like, we liked everything. See it, ya. It is, from top to bottom, amazing. I guess we should start at the cast? Let's, yeah, so let's start let's, with the let's cast. Let's start there. So, Chadwick Boseman uh, reprises his role as T'Challa slash Black Panther, and just does everything to add layers of depth and emotion to a character that the first time you saw was literally his emotional arc of his father dying. And he puts even more into that. Even though she doesn't get a lot of screen time, uh, Angela Bassett as uh, his mother, the Queen Mother, she is really phenomenal. Um, they do things to make sure that she's visually striking on screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a particular scene no. where there's some darkness and for some reason she has this really great platinum blonde hair that forces you to pay attention directly to her. And, I mean, it's not hard for Angela Bassett to just kind of command a screen, but she does it. Yeah, they... She, every scene. They really, they really helped, uh, everyone in this movie look really great. And then there's Michael B. Jordan. Mm. I can't talk enough about Michael B. Jordan because every time he's in a movie, it's his best performance yet and he keeps getting better and better and better and he's so good in this film him as eric killmonger it it's probably the most compelling villain that marvel has put forth yet yeah um with the marvel cinematic landscape uh stakes keep getting larger and larger and larger and even though this movie ramps up the stakes for these particular characters, I think uh, Michael B. Jordan's Eric Killmonger is realistically the most realistically driven of the villains that we've seen thus far. Yeah. Um, so. And he's and he's not just kind of a ham-fisted villain either, mustache twirling. No, he has a legitimate plot, a legitimate arc, and. 
And there are moments where you, like any great villain, when he starts talking, you start agreeing with him. And, I mean, it, it, this might be the best comic book movie villain since Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel comfortable in saying that. He, like I said, his motivations are realistically driven. It's not like he's out, he's like, I'm going to dominate the world. No, some, some awful things happen to him that he decides he would like to get vengeance for, but they're all deeply personal. So on a human level, you're almost rooting for him to be like, yeah, man, that rule sucks. Like, yeah. they kind of, some people kind of screwed you, and, you know, they should get what's coming to them. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then just continuing down the cast, Lapita Nyong'o is wonderful. She's wonderful in everything. She's wonderful in this. There's a reason that woman has an Oscar, and I'm I'm happy she she just shines in this film. Yeah, all of the um, all of who I I don't want to call the female supporting actresses because <laughs> every single scene they were in was clearly about them. I I'm willing to say that Black Panther at its core is more about the women surrounding Black Panther than it is even about Eric Killmonger and Black Panther. Because all of them are empowered, all of them are clearly take charge, and even though they have their own different motivations for who they're fighting for and why they're fighting, uh, all of them are of strong mind as to their resolve going into all of their actions. None of them are just like throwaway actions, You're just like, oh, well, we need to move the plot along, so we'll just have one of the female characters do something ridiculous. No. No, they all get arcs. Yeah. They all get real arcs. And that, that's rather beautiful to see in a Hollywood movie in 2018, which is kind of sad to say. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't, it's disappointing. I don't, like, I don't like that I have to be excited about that, but I am. <laughs> I feel like even if this was the norm, it's so exceptionally done that I would still be excited about the arcs that they all received and everything like that. Yeah, They yeah, were all absolutely. full three-dimensional characters in a movie that has... Uh, not a huge runtime either. No, it's, no, it's, it's just right a little over about, two hours. Yeah, so uh, they they did a lot with the amount of time that was in the film. It never feels like it's really dragging or anything like that. There are some lulls in order to kind of reset your palate from what's happening. Yeah, but they're never they never drag. They're never like, oh man, what's taking so long for this to get going again? Yeah, because none of the exposition feels like exposition. It feels like actual world building on top of everything, mm -hmm. uh, which. Uh, I think Kugler's. I think I said it during our uh, our look forward. Kugler is one of the best directors working today, and he did not disappoint. Let's see. Uh, we get Martin Freeman and um, Andy Circus. And Andy Circus. Oh, Andy Circus. All right. Now it's nice to see Andy Circus in, in this doing the live action role because he was the ham fisted villain, and he plays every moment of it like he should. Yeah. Um... Is it a live action role? Because clearly his arm is still CGI. <laughs> and Martin Freeman does a great job too. I think he's he's definitely not wasted. Yeah, um, man, I keep saying it, but he gets a really great arc for this character that you've met in passing throughout yeah. other films. He gets a couple lines here and there, but in this film, you get a lot of uh, what would be his character's backstory. I want to talk about Winston Duke as M'Baku. He just steals every moment. <laughs> every moment that there is a camera on him, he decides that he is going to fill the screen with his presence, and he does so in such a tremendous way. The heartiest laugh I got in the entire film <laughs> is set up by him threatening Martin Freeman's character. Yeah, the, the writing is, along with the comedy, just the writing just flows. It is beautiful. Um... Yeah, so There's not a breath wasted. Every word makes sense as to where we're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 phenomenal storytelling. So uh, Ryan Coogler and J Joe Robert Cole, you guys did a wonderful script. I I loved every second of it. It wasn't it wasn't real hammy dialogue. It it didn't feel like superhero chatter. It it's great. It's all great. Um, and then oh, and then there was the sets. I actually took notes at one point while you were getting something to drink, uh, which the the scene you got up for was them first entering Wakanda mm. as uh, 
through this kind of technological veil. So I immediately like whipped out my phone. I'm typing the woman's looking at me next to me just like, what are you doing, boy? Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I was like, what I wrote is that they made Wakanda this technological marvel mm -hmm. while keeping its African roots, but without making it look like what we what the assumption of like stereotypical Africa would be right right um it was it was gorgeous hmm? there's just so many things in this film that are that are just just fun to look at so the music for this movie is wonderful wonderful uh Kendrick Lamar I believe did, did the he... original songs yeah he yeah he did um and yet again like the nation of Wakanda you get Really great kind of backbeats with traditional African influence, but then remodernized in almost an industrial Daft Punk type style. Right. With uh, just a lot of kind of almost dubstep and stuff like that. It's not exactly that, but it's pretty close to industrial uptempo and things like that. Which, uh, is, which is especially fun because the man who did the music was a man named Ludwig Göransson. So you're getting all this real beautiful African-inspired rhythms and uh, kind of upbeat modern techno from some German dude. Every action sequence is gold. The the car chase through Korea is wonderful. The the two uh, battle sequences for the throne are tense and well-paced. Those are my two favorite sequences. They're wonderful because legit you can watch them uh just out of out of the film and you get two entirely different stories even though every part of the set is the same uh uh most of the characters are the same because you get a lot of the characters kind of around watching um so you get a lot of kind of similarities between the two and they're telling two drastically different stories and i i love that kind of duality in film where you get a scene and then the same scene done in a different way just to it's almost like showing off just to be like hey i could do this scene twice and make it believable and contextually just brilliant in two very different ways there are there are not enough words for me to describe exactly how good this is and i will go on record as saying that I have not been impressed with a Marvel film since uh, Civil War, or uh, Winter Soldier, Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh, so there's been a string of Marvel films that I've just been like, oh, it's another Marvel film. Oh, it's another Marvel film. This is the first Marvel film since then that I have left the theater like, wow, Marvel's still at the top of the game. Because I kind of felt that way up through the beginning of Phase 1 into Phase 2. Uh, then Winter Soldier hit, and I'm just like, wow, this movie's really great. And then everything after that's been a steady decline. This is the first film that has made me feel uh, really like, hey, maybe I should keep investing in watching these Marvel films to see where it ends up going. That being said, characters, writing, visuals, uh, music cinematography, wardrobe, costuming, everything, based on our scale, I'm going to say damn near perfect. I'm just about everywhere where you said. I'm going to digress into, I have enjoyed a couple more of the Marvel films since then. Uh, you know, I enjoyed Ant-Man. I, I really enjoyed Doctor Strange. Uh, I feel like, you know, they were still pretty standard Marvel fare. Uh but I think uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Thor Ragnarok were really climbing back to this point. And this point is Marvel on the top of its game. This point is Marvel reclaiming the throne. They said, we see what you're doing, DC, and it's not good. We're going to put Coogler in charge. Coogler's, Ryan Coogler is the truth. He's one of the finest directors working today. Fruitvale Station got robbed. That's, Throw up that graphic again. That's a true fact. Uh, <laughs> Creed got robbed in so many categories. It's one of the finest sports films ever made. 
This is one of the finest comic book films ever made. If you don't like this movie, there's something wrong with you. Okay, I'm going to get off of the soapbox now. This movie is the truth. Ryan Coogler, you are the truth. I'm not going to go quite to damn near perfect. I am going to go damn great, though. Everybody's telling you how good it is. It is that good. Yeah. So what did you think of Black Panther? Hope we didn't scare you from commenting down below, because I want to know if you loved it or hate it. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to watch our other shows on the channel. Drinking Age Movies, where Manny Classic and myself review movies that are 21 years old. Damn Fine Meats, where Manny Classic, the man here, makes burgers and other fine meats based off of those films. And as always, have a damn fine day. Yeah.